I've talked about tragedy as uh, a, a play where the plot includes a hero who makes a bad decision and comes to a downfall. And the role of the audience is to experience an explosion of emotions by watching it so that it is cathartic. They can, they can uh, experience a release. Let me give the example that I always give of, um, of the play Luanda Magere by, by Okoichi Omtata. Of course, Luanda Magere is based on the Luo epic of, of that hero. But when you think of the whole plot, you'd see it as a tragedy. One is that you have a hero who is very strong, who does not, whose body does not listen to spears or arrows. He wins battle after battle after battle. But out of a moment of, of a, a fatal flaw, which was his pride, when he was offered a, a Kipsigis girl as a wife, that pride is now started the events that led to his downfall. And so when we are listening to the story, and, and me, I can listen to that story 10 times, I love it. I love it because it's always, it's an emotional experience for me. Um, when we listen to that story, see if, if you're listening emotionally and not looking for the morals, the way the, the KICD makes you do, then what, what happens is that you, you, you have this, um, what do you call, it's a suspense, which you, you already know from the horror movies. Um, you feel a suspense because you know what Luanda is going to do and what will happen to him when he does it. So there's that emotional buildup as you watch him making a mistake and then going to the battlefront after he has been betrayed. And then when he dies, you feel an explosion. You know, all that tension that built up now explodes. But uh, you notice in the story, and this is what happens in many epics, they don't end with a moral. And this was one thing that my students found hard to understand. Eh? They thought now it's a moral about youth and I don't know developments. <laughs> so amazing. Um, so what happens that when the hero falls, he, his, his fall is not a fall of defeat. It's actually a fall of victory. Because uh, his, 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 his falling down becomes the affirmation of the community. The community's values, the community's hero, is, I mean, the fact that the community sees him as a hero. So it's not a fall. It's not a defeat, sorry. It's not a defeat. And you know, in the story of Lord Magere, he turns into a rock which can be found up to today. So that's how epics go. The, the fall, when the hero falls, it's not a defeat. It's an affirmation of the community because through his fall, the community is the one that is, um, is uh, ministered to. They, are, they, they heal because of that explosion of emotion. And then the story is told again and again and again and again. And that's what tragedies are supposed to be. They're supposed to be stories that are told again and again and again because it is healing for the community. Um, what other example? We can look at the example of Jesus, although there's a problem with that story, but let me just, for the sake of plot, uh, you know, when, when you go through his, his uh, march into Jerusalem, and people are cheering. It's a build up for what you know is going to happen, which is his eventual crucifix uh, torture, humiliation, and then crucifixion. And it is not a mistake, and we will talk about this at the end of the class. It is not a mistake that the Christian church no longer performs that play. I think it's only the Catholics who have stuck to the tradition of performing that build up, the build up from from uh, entering the gates of Jerusalem all the way to his crucifixion. Other churches avoid it. They're always dancing and singing. And we'll talk, we'll talk about that. That one is a very important point that we need to make about this celebration culture, the avoidance of pain. 
which now Christian Christians have done because they are always triumphant in the Lord, claiming promises and all that other stuff. Okay, um, so that's tragedy. Uh, um, the hero goes through a series of events and he reaches a peak or she reaches a peak. And when they make the mistake and start to decline, we start to experience intense pain, intense sorrow, intense empathy, which finally breaks, explodes, sorry, when um, you, when the hero falls. What defines the hero? The hero is defined by power. The hero must be powerful. You cannot have a powerless person as a hero in a tragedy. So when you see people in the media talking about a tragedy because it happened to poor people, poor people who had been displaced, then it rains and it floods and people die. That's not a tragedy. That's a, maybe a catastrophe, but it's not a tragedy in the literary sense of the word because these people were powerless. They didn't have power to influence anything. And if you recall, I talked about power about four weeks ago. Power is the ability to influence something beyond yourself and to have the opportunity and the circumstances to do so. So if people are evicted and then it rains, they are not powerful because the eviction was not done by them. They had no, when, when cops come and when the police come with guns and everything, they, they are powerless. If they are told go away, uh, they are evicted, they go. So if something happens to them, that is not a tragedy. It's an injustice actually, because injustice is, is when uh, quote unquote tragedy happens to the, the, the powerless. So the defining characteristic of tragedy is power, power. The hero must be powerful. They must be powerful. And that's why you find, like if some of you have done Shakespeare, uh, what's his name? Julius Caesar is a tragic play because Julius Caesar is emperor. And then what happens to him? He dies. But you see he's justified. Remember what I said? Even if the hero is killed, it's not a defeat. Because like when Julius Caesar dies, then Brutus and the others realize, oops, what did we do? And then they start fighting and the kingdom, the empire crumbles. So tragedy is, when a hero dies, it's not tragic, it's defeat. I mean, it's not defeat. And then now you see, we still tell the story. I mean, uh, Shakespeare would now write about Julius Caesar a few centuries later because it's still, it is a story that affirms empire, sorry to say. Or if we look at the, the story of Rwanda Magdalene, it still affirms the, the, the Luo group, the ethnic group, because he rep uh, Rwanda represents the best of them. But he also is one of them because he was human and he made a mistake. The other thing I want you to remember is melodrama. M-E-L-O-D-R-A-M-A. -E. What is the difference between melodrama and tragedy? Melodrama is there is no hero. There's no powerful hero who makes a mistake. And in fact, what happens with melodrama is that it's usually the victims who suffer, not the, the, the powerful. But more than that with melodrama, melodrama does not make us experience a purge of emotions. It just, it makes us feel pity. What's the difference? You see, when, when you're watching tragedy and you see the hero fall, even though that creates an intense emotion, you don't pity the hero because the hero uh, is a powerful figure and remains powerful throughout the life of the community that, that sees that story. So even when you think even of the Christians, the Christians, they brought I mean, Christ resurrected. So you don't pity Christ, although again, let's, we'll come back to crazy theology. 
they pity Christ and they say, well, yeah, don't reject Christ because you see how what he did for you. He died for you. Imagine, you know, that's how we think of, that's how Christians think these days. But I'm not talking about that kind of idea. I'm talking about where you know the resurrection comes before. I mean, you know there is the, the crucifixion comes before the resurrection. So even if you're experiencing intense pain and shuddering at what happened to Jesus on the cross, you know that the resurrection is coming. But in melodrama, you say woye. Melodrama is woye. You don't think about how did this guy get into a situation where he's being uh, nailed to a tree, or you don't think about the situation where you're thinking Luanda Magere is, is, is being beaten at battle. You don't think about that. You just say, oh yeah, oh yeah, now look at what happened. Let's pity him, which was what my students from another class were doing. They were pitying Luanda Magere and feeling sorry for him. Meaning that the whole play, they didn't identify with the character. They didn't identify with the character. And so when the character fell, they said, well, yeah, poor guy, if only he had done this. In fact, we start correcting Jesus even. We start, in fact, they were telling me, you know, if Luanda had listened, maybe that is to completely misunderstand what a tragedy is. But actually what has happened in today's neoliberal society is that we have substituted melodrama for tragedy. The things we call tragedy are actually melodrama. They are well, years. Let's send some money to somebody else. It's not an experience of purging of the emotions and a rec reckoning of our human helplessness. That's not what happens. What happens is we start asking with Red Cross, well, yes, that's what we do. 